well, I usually don't test drive in the rain, but it's going to rain for the next couple of days, so I need to get this done. And it's not like this car hasn't been in the rain before. It is right now. So it's going to be fine. I'll get back. We'll clean it up. It's a 1970 Ford Mustang. This is a fastback clone conversion car. First one we've ever had. It does have the original 302 under the hood. It does have power steering. No power brakes on this one, though. And we're going to be taking it down the road looking for flaws. Chips, scratches, rusted dents. We'll check everything out on this car just like we do all the rest of the cars here at Maple Motors. Be sure to hit subscribe and share this video. Um, we're getting ready to take off here. It's going to be a cold start too. Let's do it. It's about that time. Let's go for a ride. Okay, so before we leave, place those bets. Do you think the horn works? Looking around the dash, got some spots up there on the pad. Carpet's been redone. Go ahead and shut the door, it's starting to get wet. This is an actual cold start here. I'm gonna let this Nova cut off beside me and just pulled up, started rubbing the motor. Showing uh, 93,602 on the miles. We'll look around the interior some more until they cut that car off. package trays got some water drippage so that's that's a good thing about doing the test drive while it's raining you can see the water you can see some gaps over here on the windows so it needs some seals it's like both sides need seals all right headliner a little bit loose in the corners could be stretched out mechanics headliner there somebody's replaced it but they didn't get it tight this is a cold start Okay, so it does start up good. This old radio here, I doubt it works. It's a super tuner though. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Blower motor. Nothing. Glove box. Little straps not screwed on there. Wipers. I was gonna say, I hope the wipers work. I mean, I could drive without them, but I don't prefer to. We'll need to stop and get some gas. Turn signals. See it popping up over here, but you gotta manually flash it. Right side. The bulb's out on the right side, but you can hear it clicking, so it's, it's flashing on the right side. Did you place your bets on the horn? Let's try it out. Um, I haven't tried it. I'm gonna say yes. Oh man. Make sure there's not a button anywhere hiding off in here. Little ashtray looks like it they put in right. I think to put the ashtray in, you gotta put in gear there. This little piece is off for sure. Looks slanted. Okay, I'm going to let it warm up just a little bit. As soon as I gave it gas, it... Yeah, she's cold still, so I'm going to let her warm up for a little bit. And then we'll take off down the road, guys, and see how this one runs and drives. Okay, so we're getting ready to take off, and it looks like I don't have seat belts in this one, so they didn't add that. Anyways, we'll get some gas. These windshield wipers are not the best. Manual brakes on this one. They definitely feel like manual brakes too. And this is the first time I've taken it down the road.
a little bit of a hesitation when you get into the throttle. She feels like she's got a good amount of power. Back into our brakes. They're not pulling or anything. I'm starting to get used to them. The speedo looks like it's pretty accurate. initially give it the gas it hesitates and it takes off Got a little bit of a flat spot there probably ethanol build up in the carburetor I know y'all hear that a lot from me but this these cars they like to sit people like to put them in the garage they won't drive them for a little bit six months at a time and the gas will dry up and leave back the uh, ethanol causes a little bit of running issues there and after you drive a little bit it'll clean out. Okay well up next you'll see me get some undercarriage shots and lighten everything up on this car. I'll also go over any other issues that I see. I'll be back. looking at the dash here our oil pressure gauge isn't moving at all it looks like it hasn't moved since we left the lot neither is the temp gauge and it should be up by now gas gauge we'll be getting gas here shortly uh, and we'll check it well we did get some fuel again with the five gallons 93 octane right behind the cab here All right. <clears throat> a little foggy in here. Gas gauge was on E. We'll give her just a second. See if it moves a little bit. Kind of see it coming up. Awful slow, ain't it? I don't think the gas gauge works on this one. If anything changes, I will let you know, guys.
All right, hopefully y'all can hear me. Uh, my camera sounds a little bit different since it was soaked in water. <laughs> All right. Heading on back to the lot now. Actually, I'm gonna find like an awning somewhere. And use that to my advantage right now. I think my biggest biggest disadvantage right now is the fogging and no way to kill it. Plus the windshield wipers are not that great on this thing. Here we go. Again, hopefully the audio is okay. Now, it looks like our temp gauge has started working. It's on the low side, but it's moved. It's not just dead on the sea, it's actually up a quarter of the way now. And I know y'all don't have a good visual, neither do I. I can see the road, I can see the lines, I can see the cars. I'm doing okay. So this thing's still got a little bit of a hesitation when you hit the brakes. I mean, when you hit the gas, like when you first hit it. Uh, and of course in the rain manual brakes you really got to give yourself some space otherwise you'll just slide right into somebody got to be careful I hear a, the fan sounds like it's tapping something up there too but it could just be the belt now, I'm gonna find out here at the end when we do the walk around uh, typically you want to cut the car off, check the fan blades, make sure nothing's loose, and then uh, cut the car on, check the belt, see if it's loose, and that's what we'll be doing if you mess with a fan. When the car's on, it could be dangerous. But I'm going to say that's going to be a belt and a pulley squeaking bump in the road there you can hardly notice a lot of water on this road here there's an on it in there but I think I'm gonna go on down past the lot our gas gauge never came up it's not working our temp gauge it's quarter way to halfway now so maybe it's coming around maybe it's trying to work that oil pressure gauge it's not doing anything good to go here the tires if you turn all the way they rub oversized aftermarket wheels and tires on this one but it seems to run really well let's see I'm hoping yeah she's open this is a detail bay going so slow down the road there this is a detail bay normally for uh, a different company when it's nice outside but today it's raining so I'm gonna take advantage of it now we're gonna get the chamois out kind of wipe the car down it's soaking wet and we'll do picking out the flaws Of course, picking out the flaws is coming up next, so stick around for that. I'll see y'all here in a moment. Well, I got her all cleaned up again. So, I'm looking for chips, scratches, rust, and dents on this one. We'll get started up in the front. Our front bumper has been replaced. It's nice and clean. So a piece on the lower front end. It actually looks great up here in the front. And typically, that's where you're going to get a lot of your chips. Of course, 
scouts there. Tires on this one are in good shape. Overspray here. Overspray on the side too. Maybe some road debris. Stickers peeling up there in the corner. Now the door, if you shut it firm, it actually goes in a little bit too much. You can see where the paint's chipping from it too. And yes, this is a conversion car here. Shit. Somebody has made it into the fastback. Bubbles. I already know there's going to be comments that are going to say, no, that's a fastback. But listen to me. Somebody made it into a fastback. I'm sure they spent about the same amount of money as a fastback just to make this one into one. But it's only 27 knot, so that does make a big difference for us reselling wise. Because that gets you in a fastback under 40 grand. Most of the time, that's what you're going to spend for one. And I, I say that as in a decent condition, but not an excellent condition. Got some dimples in the paint up top. Something on top of the paint there. Coming up on the back. spot here in the bumper pitting the reverse light bumper's been replaced missing the trim piece that goes there tail lights look good your jam there Decent shape, mat here. A little bit of moisture on top, but that's not that's not that bad. That's just a little bit, and that could have been from where I opened the truck lid. You do got some weak spots in the trunk. I can see the ground. Look at this side. The same thing up here. The spots in the trunk, you can see the ground through. See some mud over here, the fender. little loose on the lid but it is shut sitting high on this side put the scuffs on the wing
around there. The gap's just a little big here on the passenger door. Stripe's got some little bubbles. Got it coming up there. Hazy mark. A little bit of pitting. The roof's got some little dimples, like these chemical pill. You can see kind of specks popping up everywhere. It's not rain. There's some rain up here, but it's slick, it feels smooth. All right, we made it around the ride. We'll go ahead and open this door, check it out. Check out the driver's door, check out the interior. Start it up, listen to the motor, and conclude this video. Just before we do that, we'll look under the hood, check that blade, see if it was hitting something. I don't guess the antenna's hooked up. <laughs> or maybe it is. I got the driver's mat soaking wet driving around. Getting in and out of the car. Headliner's just a little wrinkly there. Got some water in the back. Back window is leaking. I gotta remember to do the uh, undercarriage shot before I leave here. I didn't want to do it out there. I think that light might end up broken. Spot missing here on the dash. The belt, a little bit loose. And the blades are good. I don't know what the, it's gotta be the belt slipping on here, causing that little chirp. It feels dry. I mean, it shouldn't be that loose. It needs to be tightened up just a hair. Just a hair. Let's check this other one. The other one's even looser. That's your alternator belt. Not bad. Neither one of them are bad. But we got something chirping here. And if I was going to say, I'd say it's this alternator. It looks kind of older. <laughs> but I was trying to figure it out throughout the video. What's chirping up there? The belt's just going to be tied to hair more. But I don't even think it's them that's chirping anymore. I think it's a pulley. Oh, 
we got some tape left over. Sure do. Little bubbles there. See some water getting in here because there was no seal on this back window. I went to give it gas and then the second time it started right up. Soft shut. See the door's kind of hanging. A little bit firm. Shut's good. Just a little bit sunk in there. I think it just needs to be adjusted. Yeah, the belts don't look like they're flopping around or anything. Sounds pretty smooth. Let's see if I got my hand up in here. Yeah, looks good to me. Got a little bit of rust behind this hinge here. Dropping out. Looks like it's coming from right there. firm on the shut here. There it is. You got some imperfections on the nose. Silicone here on the stripe for some reason. Dent here. Sitting a little high on this side too. We got it down a little. Overspray. Some chips on the edge. Well, we're done here. Guys, be sure to hit subscribe and share this video. I try to point out flaws so you know what you're getting before you get here. Basically, I'm not trying to sell you a car. I'm trying to tell you what's wrong with it. That's what these videos are for. And if you do like them, share. Hit like. And be sure to hit subscribe. It's free to make a YouTube account. Definitely worth it. All right, guys. I'm going to head on back to the lot. Check out maplemotors.com for detailed pictures, financing, and shipping. And I'll see you in the next video. Later, guys.